She's over me She caught me with her hypnotic dance She holds me here with only a glance She's over me She's over me Welcome, everybody, to the Paranormal Portal, our Christmas edition of our Bedtime Stories from Beyond. I um, absolutely hope you all have had a wonderful holiday and uh, all of your dreams came true today, whatever that means. I don't know. But it's finally looking like it's pretty much beyond us. So um, it's <laughs> it's this big build up to a, a quick finish always on the holidays. But I hope you've enjoyed your time and, and were close to those you love and uh had a wonderful celebration, whatever you did, but thank you for being here to celebrate with me. Um, and I hope you're all comfy because it is time for bed. All right, guys. Well, welcome again to the Paranormal Portal Bedtime Stories from Beyond. I'm your host, Brent Thomas, and uh, we are now officially underway. So, uh, again, hope you had a great holiday, however you celebrated, whatever you celebrated. I hope it was just wonderful. So, um, tonight we're going to kind of close out all of our uh, Christmas stories and, and reflections on the Christmas season, uh, holiday season, uh, again, Christmas is just, uh, <laughs> it's the most familiar term to me because it's what I've, I've grown up with. Um, but I, I do respect and, and recognize many different celebrations at this time of the year. And I don't mean to exclude any others um, by virtue of my, you know, choice of words. It's just mostly a habit, actually. <laughs> so, um, but I love you all and you know that. So welcome to the show. And uh, I, I, uh, I think it was a great day. I'm, I'm plenty fat and happy now. Oh, my God, I ate too much. And not only did I eat too much once, but I ate too much twice. So, um, But that's my own fault. <laughs> However, I'm, I'm uh, definitely uh, churning up a fresh batch of, of, uh, of mischief to uh, take care of later. <laughs> I don't know how to say that nice, but it's just like, oh, my God, did I eat too much. Oof, we uh, had a turkey today, and it was... Uh, it was delicious, but uh, that's probably part of the problem is it's delicious, and it kept tasting like more. And so I kept having more, and therefore I'm in the state that I'm in now. But that's the way you're supposed to do holidays, I think. I think I did it right, so I got that going for me. But uh, the little man had a had a great time last night shredding presents, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and Santa was good to him, so that was good. He, he was... Plenty pleased with his haul this year, and uh, I'm realizing that uh, as as the holidays pass, we need a bigger house because this kid has way too much stuff. Oh, my God. But anyway, that's what you do when you're a parent. 
try to spoil them while you can. So um, tonight we're going to get into a few more of the Christmas uh, theme stories or holiday theme stories. Um, I, I think these are really cool. Uh, and I don't know that it probably matters a whole lot about the time of the year, but I think that I think that oftentimes people seem to experience, you know, not I, I don't know. This is really probably a uh, an unquantified re- uh, analysis on my part, but it seems like a lot of the stories we've covered that are mentioning Christmas have to do with a lot of loved ones visiting and reassurances and and stuff. And I think that that's probably because it's observed as a sacred time. And so those loved ones that have passed um, perhaps still observe it as a sacred time of family. And so they reach out to try to make their presences known. I I really wish that I had had, you know, more profound events around the holidays. I think that that would be really cool. I've had a few and I've shared uh, uh, one of them uh, from when I was a kid and kind of coming to terms with the whole Santa Claus thing. But uh, other than that, I can't recall any really amazing experiences that I've had around the holidays. But I, I just think it's a really cool vibe usually. Um, of course, for the kids it is because there's a mountain of, of wrapped things. They don't know what they are. And, and it's that whole anticipation and that build. And, and then, you know, you get to uncover it. And then, of course, you get to have these new things. And that's always exciting. And, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's not... It's not as if, uh, you know, they're doing it wrong. They're kids, and, and that's what kids are. They, they enjoy things like that. But um, as we move older into our, into our years, as we move on with our lives, it becomes less, well, it sh- <laughs> hopefully it becomes less about things and more about the spirit of it, that maybe the Christmas season, the holiday season is, you know, along with New Year's, um, embodies change, and it embodies milestones that we encounter on our journey. And, and perhaps these are amazing times of reflection for all of us that we kind of look back at what just happened in the last, you know, several months and we kind of weigh it and then we gear ahead towards our next year and, you know, hopefully do it better the next time around. But uh, I think this has been an amazing year for, for me personally. It's really been uh, incredible. And I've been doing the portal for, you know, several years now, but We've only been doing the the streaming portion of it for, you know, I I suppose the spring was probably when we were really getting underway, maybe a little bit longer. I guess I got to look before I speak because for me, time, time, I I don't know. I don't ever like, I'm not a a chronological kind of person. It's just like that was back then and this is right now. And that's about all I, I, I gauge it by. So when I come to time measurements, I'm oftentimes really mistaken, but I think it's just been primarily this year, um, was when I got the new, uh, computer and could handle the streaming and, and to see what the portals become has been really exciting. And to see how you guys have rallied around it and, and helped to create this amazing community and, uh, make it what it is today. So, uh, I'm really excited for this next year because, you know, I mean, we're, we're really at a point where things are growing quickly and, uh, and it's, it's really fun to see what it's going to become. And I know I've repeated that a bunch of times throughout this holiday season, but, you know, again, this is my year in reflecting, and it's, and it's me looking at all that has happened and looking ahead at all the things I plan to have happen and hope that I can make happen. So it's an exciting time all around. So let's get into some of these stories, and uh, hopefully you guys will feel plenty entertained. And I'm not really in a crunch for time tonight, so we'll we'll go as long as we go. We don't <laughs> I don't have a curfew tonight, so that's good. So let me read this first one for you. He said this happened uh, a few years ago, and I'd been invited to a wonderful but small gathering of family and friends, and we would be celebrating the holidays together, and it really made me happy. As soon as I entered the residence, wait a minute, I read this one already. Yes, I did. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I recognize that from last night. <laughs> Let me read the next one that I had pulled up here. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's just me uh, not paying attention and definitely not closing my windows when I'm done with them. All right, this story has its beginning in 2008, uh, shortly after a visit to Ohio in May of that year. Uh, there was a lot of activity at the house during the summer and fall, some of which I've talked about. 
but the following is an account that happens after that. And I tend to get very homesick during the holidays, so my hubby does everything within his power to alleviate the holiday blues that I suffer. We decorate the whole house. That year, we, ended, we needed a new tree as the one we had started to shed its needles. Uh, it was a fake tree, so you know how it was, you know, it was old. And we got a cheap little thing from Walmart, and I mean, this thing is ugly. The needles are shiny plastic, and it looks so fake. But we were running short of cash, and that was all we could afford for the time being. So every year that we were in this house, I would find a broken ornaments under the tree. And the tree was only was in the only carpeted room in the house, and we kept a gate across the door so the dogs couldn't get in the room. And also, we had hanging above the entrance to the kitchen a wire sculpture that looked like a forest in winter. The hall upstairs only had a railing, so you could see the doors to the bedrooms, and we would put a string of lights and some small ornaments on the, sub on the sculpture and plug it into my son's bedroom. Again, every year there would be at least one broken ornament lying on the floor in the, by the kitchen. Numerous times I would wake up and go downstairs to find the big tree lit, knowing full well that I turned it off before going to bed. My husband likes garage sales, and he had purchased an almost life-size singing Santa with a motion detector, and he sings probably eight or ten songs, and we never left him plugged in long enough to find out as, it, as he liked to start singing on his own. That Christmas, while we were cleaning up, after opening the presents, I asked, what about the ghosties? <laughs> Did anyone get the ghosties a present? No sooner had these words left my mouth when crash... Lying on the floor under the sculpture was a broken ornament. We were all in the living room at the time, as we had just finished opening our gifts. Unfortunately, like so many others in this great country, we lost our house to foreclosure, and in January be began the unpleasant task of finding a new home to rent. We finally found a really nice place in the same area and began moving in in February, and we had a lot of storage space in our old home, and and if we had realized how much stuff we had accumulated over those 10 years, we would have started packing a lot sooner. I mentioned in my previous, uh, a previous story the, the fascination that the garage door held for my friends. Throughout the month, as we were taking things from the house, the door closed several times on its own. The final day we were there, it closed three times. My son, Junior, said that our friends didn't want us to leave. So I said to the air, you guys can come with us if you want to. <coughs> Jeez, wow, that's a good plan. I did my final walkthrough and said goodbye to the home, and I repeated these words in every room. And we were in our new house a few weeks when my husband decided to have a garage sale of his own. I wasn't sure if my friends had followed us, as I hadn't seen or heard anything out of the ordinary. I had just come home from work that day and seated myself by my stepdaughter, at the rear of the garage and was engaged in small talk and situated under the garage door were my husband's keyboards, the musical kind, and a gentleman and his son were considering them and my husband walked away to search for the adapters and all of a sudden the garage door started coming down right over the man and his son. My husband ran over and pushed the t little boy out of the way and got the door back up. He apologized and said he didn't know why that happened. Well, I knew and I sat there giggling. No one else would find the humor. <laughs> On one other note, we had a Santa for sale. We had the Santa for sale. However, no one bought him. Throughout the rest of that year, um, there were only a few small happenings. The washer became unplugged. The light that we leave on for the dogs in the family room was turned off one evening. Though I wasn't sure I had turned it on, I remember the white spots in my eyes because I had looked down into the shade to see if it was if it was lit. It also had become unplugged after I had let the puppies outside and gone to the laundry room for my work clothes and a few other less spectacular things. My holiday blues seemed to worsen every year, and this last was no exception. When we put the tree that we had got the previous year, when we put up the tree, rather, um, we discovered that it was way too small for this house, so we decided to put it in the family room by the fireplace and get another one for the living room. I was worried about the puppies getting into it as the family room is their domain, and they're Jack Russell Terriers, and if you don't know anything about them, they eat everything. They are not allowed anywhere else in the house, 
My husband placed it on the hearth, and he decorated the mantle with garland and stockings, etc. Then he had strung lights along it, and it was pretty, and he had to plug it in behind the television, and I protested at the conven- inconvenience. So he put an extension cord with a remote on it, so all we had to do was push the button, and like magic, the whole thing lit up. <coughs> Excuse me. The day we put the trees up, I cleaned the living room real well. The floor in the living room has that phony hard wood stuff. It, I clean it with damp mopping, and I just finished mopping and, and learned the mop, lean the mop against the wall at the bottom of the stairs. My son, Brandon, my husband, and I went upstairs to allow the floor to dry and to play on our computers for a little while, and we were in a conversation when we heard a thump. And good old Santa started singing. I thought the noise sounded like a dog bark, but my son and husband said it sounded like the mop falling. We were discussing this all through Santa's song and had come to the conclusion that it has a sound sensor also. And when he started a new song, I started laughing. And Brandon had this look of disbelief on his face. When the song ended, we went to the foot of the steps and started clapping his hands and yelling, Hey Santa, wake up! and stomped his feet, and nothing happened. He crossed his arms in the humph style and stood there staring, fully perplexed, at Santa for at least a good five seconds. Suddenly, Santa turned towards my son and started singing, Well, the weather outside is frightful. He threw his hand in the air and ran upstairs. I laughed until I cried. My husband, a a non-believer, yeah, right, went down and unplugged him. He's such a party pooper. Again, almost every morning when I woke up, both trees would be lit, and I did not go to bed without turning them off, with the exception of Christmas Eve. My boys pay the electric bill, which makes them very conscious about leaving lights on. Good call. And uh, so I know that they would not be so careless. The tree in the living room was plugged into an outlet that had to be switched on by the light switch on the wall near the front door. On one of the rare occasions that I wake up, that I woke up and they were off, I was sitting at the little table in the kitchen having my coffee. I wake up very early at about 2.45 a.m. Wow. Brandon had just come home, and we were talking about things at work, and we work in the same store, and our house now is a split level, and you can go, you can look down into the family room from the kitchen. And I asked him something, and I glanced into the other room, and pop, the tree lit up. I looked at Brandon, and again, that perplexed look was on his face. I said, good morning, ghosties, and Merry Christmas. We looked for the remote and found it on top of the water cooler under two baseball caps. And yes, the water cooler does vibrate slightly when it's plugged in. We had unplugged it that morning to defrost it as the water level was low and it freezes up. My husband says that the trees were lit by someone else's garage door opener or radio transmission from airplanes. They must be really strong waves to be able to flip a light switch. While they are trimming the tree in the living room, I placed a couple of small hand crocheted stockings on it and told my ghosties that they were for them and asked them please not break any ornaments this year. And they didn't. Well, there you go. That's uh, (laughs) That's a cool story. I don't know. She's not freaked out. They're not really freaked out. They just find it curious. I guess if you got to share a house with the unseen, that's the way to be. As long as it's not dark and horrible, that's pretty cool. I like that story. And it was quite long. Okay, this one's another rather long one, but what the heck? Not too long, though. It's shorter than the last one. <clears throat> Excuse me. At Christmas can be a ra- rather emotional time for many of us, and the year has been a bit rougher for me than others since my son's death in 2002. Oh, that's sad. All the holidays are all bittersweet. I think it's the term for it. I miss him for the rest of my still and the rest of my still living family very much, but even more so during the holidays when everything seems so family oriented for Christmas. This Christmas, my daughter informed me as gently as possible that she can only spend part of Christmas Eve with me as she and her the boyfriend were, were also going to his family's get-together and then, of course, Christmas Day is spent with her dad and his people. I think I'm okay with it. I want to be okay with it. But honestly, on the inside, 
I'm being very pouty about it. Christmas Eve is supposed to be my time. I know. Grow up, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, things uh, have been going on lately that lead me to think my son is hanging around. Silly, illogical things. At first I thought maybe some prankster was passing through. Most of my family have a weird sense of humor, so it could be any one of them. Things are very normal, or at least what passes as normal around here, until last Monday when Christmas break began. Usually I can distract myself with doing work or trying to plot out what I'm going to work on that day, and when I get home from work, I'm quite frankly too tired to think, period. However, lacking work, my mind has too much time and wants to go into self-pity mode. I'll be alone on Christmas and blah, 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 blah. Yep, the whole whiny, snotty nose bit, and I really can't stand myself when I get like that, so I'm willing to entertain the notion that some of this could be a manifestation from my subconscious. So on Monday, the 21st of December, at 4 a.m., I'm laying in bed telling myself I really need to put up the tree today. I swing my feet out of bed, and I'm standing up, kick something across the floor. Turning on the overhead light, I see it's a small ornament my son had made me. I pick it up wondering how it got there, when I haven't even pulled the ornaments out of storage yet. Or I'd blame the cat. Weird. I also noticed the room was a bit chilly, as was the apartment, but it's winter. So about 4.20 or so, I go to make the coffee, and there are the ground. Where so where are the grounds? Not on the shelf, not on the counter, not in the fridge. Nowhere that makes any sense. Okay, maybe my roommate used it and never should have taught him how to make coffee, and he forgot to tell me. Uh, guess instant will have to do. So, why is the can of coffee sitting in the microwave? Rumi denies knowledge of this when I ask later. At 9 a.m., I begin the ultimate woman versus tree struggle inside the closet. I practically have to empty the closet in order to get the tree sections, then leverage the two pieces out one at a time in the living room. And sounds easy enough, but each section is nearly as big as I am. The string I've wound and tied around the base section is, as it's the widest, decides partway out of the closet to pop, and the tree opens up, squashing me against the wall. The wrestling match has begun in earnest now. And at one point I'm actually said out loud, Look, tree, this ends one way. I win, so give up now. And I swear it felt as if someone was messing with me. You know how it feels to play tug-of-war with a dog? Well, the tree was acting like that. Like someone had a hold of it and was just shaking it. Finally, I victoriously drag it out, and it was near 10 a.m. when I finally had it assembled and ready to decorate. Funny. I couldn't find a break in that twine I had used. It was as if someone had undid the knot. Hmm. At some point, not sure of the time, roommate remarked I'd noticed if I'd noticed every light in the house seemed to be flickering now and then. I did say that I noticed it, and if it kept up, I'd get the landlord to send an electrician around. Then on Tuesday, the 22nd of December, 4 a.m., I'm up to use the bathroom and start the day and the apartment is still chilly feeling in spots. On my way through the living room, one of my musical snow globes started playing. Okay, maybe the vibration of my step set it off, but it plays its entire song. From the bathroom, I hear the second snow globe start playing as the first one ends. Again, the entire song. I make my way back to the living room just as the last note is struck, and my third globe does the same thing. I don't know of any vibration that could, that could cause all of this. They're the type with the wind-up key in the bottom, and if they don't, and they don't have off switches or anything. Definitely odd, to say the least. Off and on throughout the morning, Kirby, my cat, acts like he's interacting with somebody. I watch him stand on his hind legs, roll around the floor as if wrestling with someone, then tear around the room. Not as if he's scared, but playing. I can't help but laugh. About 3.30 in the afternoon, I'm sitting on the floor wrapping presents, and as I was picking up the scissors, I happened to look into the glass of my curio cabinet, and just for a split second, I thought I saw someone, a young man. It was barely more of an outline, and so quickly gone, but 
I breathed my son's name all the same. Right after that, the tape went missing. It wasn't lurking under any wrapping paper nor under my leg. It, I hadn't gone anywhere. I stood up anyway and looked everywhere in arm's reach and standing there. On a whim, I spoke to the air. Ha ha, very funny, Josh. Give the tape back, please. I jumped a foot in the air when something struck me softly in the back. Turning around, there laid the tape. Laughing, I said, Geez, you expect me to catch it with my butt or what? <laughs> I'm going to admit something here. Might sound crazy, but I continued talking as I wrapped the presents. Nothing of great import, just mom stuff, like I miss him, and I was so grateful that for the time we had as a family and reliving some memories, and he always could make me laugh. I did add that if at all possible, if he could stop making the lights flicker, if that was him, it scares the roommate, and they haven't flickered once since then. That's a cool, cool story. Again, there you go, the, the whole visitation, the closeness of family. It seems to be important on the other side as well, so that's good. Maybe they're always close, but it's in those times. When the holidays come, it just seems like it's so much more empty without those that we love. And, you know, we all have those situations. There's people in our lives that aren't in our lives anymore, and, and it's painful, and it's hard to, hard to, you know, understand and hard to, hard to, I don't know, hard to pretend everything's normal when there's a hole in you, you know? So I guess we just do the best we can. We just focus on what's in front of us, and in our hearts, those loved ones will always be anyway. So, This next one is uh, comes out of Arizona. It's from 2010. In 2002, my sister and her husband, David, moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan. My brother-in-law suddenly moved back to Phoenix a year later in 2003 with his two daughters without my sister. My sister was having an affair with another man. My sister and David went back and forth between Michigan and Phoenix. Some weeks they were together, and when then, when then he or she was back in Phoenix and then back in Detroit, it was crazy to say the least. The family kept out of the personal issues. My brother-in-law ended up living in Phoenix with his little girls, and I stopped by one morning at 7.30 a.m. and to have some coffee with him before I went to work, and I wanted to catch up on the latest about my sister and him, and when he answered the door, he was absolutely hammered. He had a glass of booze in his hand, and when he saw me, he almost closed the door in my face. After that, the girls went to back to live in Detroit with my sister. Christmas was just three days away when I called my sister in Detroit to ask about the girls, and I asked if she had spoken with Dave, and she said no, which didn't surprise me. When I spoke to Dave in Phoenix, he would always say my sister wouldn't talk to him. He said she always handed the phone over to one of the kids. <clears throat> the day after Christmas, my phone woke me up around 5 a.m. I've always hated phone calls in the middle of the night. Nine times out of ten, you know it's someone in trouble or somebody died. It was the police. Mr. Bruce? Yeah? Mr. Bruce, this is Officer James. I'm with the City of Phoenix Police Department, and I'm sorry to tell you, but we have a situation here, and we hope you can help us resolve it. I thought to myself, my God, David did something to my sister and the kids. Then I realized David was here in Phoenix. Do you know a person named David? Yeah, Yes, I do. Is there something wrong? Yes, there is, Mr. Bruce. Can you come down to Good Samaritan Hospital emergency room? Are you there, Mr. Bruce? Yes, I am. Mr. And then he said, David's last name has listed you as a contact. The first contact name is my sister's name, and the other contact is you. <clears throat> they could not make contact with my sister, so we called you. What's wrong? Mr. David committed suicide. We need you to come down to the hospital emergency room, Mr. Bruce. Once I got there, the emergency room was completely empty except for a nurse behind the reception, reception desk. And she talked on the intercom, and the police officer came out. The police officer explained that there were three nurses that experienced my brother-in-law's suicide. On Christmas Eve, my brother-in-law walked into the emergency room and asked if this was the emergency room, and they said yes. 
They asked him what his emergency was, and he said, someone's going to die. And they made him fill out some insurance forms and called the police department, etc. And he said, <clears throat> excuse me, this is my, the emergency room, am I correct? The nurse said yes. He took out a gun out of his pocket and put it to the side of the head and said, well, you have an emergency. Then he shot himself. My sister never answered her phone until two days after Christmas. I was so angry with my sister that she never picked up the phone or ever spoke to David when he called, and she knew it was him. Nor did she let him talk to the girls. After hours of calling, she finally picked up the phone, and, and I said, Have you spoken to David lately? She said, No, but I just saw him. He came by Christmas Eve and ran up the stairs to give the girls their Christmas presents and to say good night and wish them a Merry Christmas. He told me he flew in from Phoenix, uh, especially for the girls, and I waved at him from the kitchen and smiled and saw him run up the stairs with presents under his arms, and I saw him run down the stairs with this glass of vodka in hand and wave at me again as he walked out the front door and left. Then she said, the funny thing was, on Christmas Day when my girls opened their presents, there were no presents from David. I said, sister, that's impossible. You could not have seen him on Christmas Eve. David's dead. He committed suicide on Christmas Eve here in Phoenix. There's no way he could have been in Detroit on Christmas Eve. She started to cry. After I went to the hospital and identified David's body, we went to his house with the police to get his personal belongings. He was an only child, and both of his parents died in a house fire when he was only 12. And his parents were alcoholics, and all of his relatives were born-again Christians, and David hated his relatives because they berated his mother and father for living an evil life. When the police and I went to his house, it was a shock. When the police opened the door to his house, there were bottles of vodka all over the place. We could hardly walk without pushing vodka bottles aside. There were vodka bottles in his kitchen sink, in his closet, in his bathroom sink, in his garage, and even in the bedroom dresser. Some bottles still had vodka in them. The most heartbreaking thing of all of this was his bedroom. Next to his bed, where he spent most of his time watching television, were more bottles of vodka, many still full, and a big pile of Christmas presents, all wrapped up beautiful ribbons and from Santa cards addressed to his little girls. And that was a little too much for me. History repeats itself. When I talked to my sister, I said, don't tell them their father's dead. I'll send the presents for them from Phoenix, and you can tell them that their dad was too busy and forgot to send the presents before Christmas. You can tell them later about their dad's death. Don't ruin Christmas for them. I'm curious, what would you have done? She was pregnant from her lover and bore a son after David died, and she died at 57. Wow. That's a heavy, heavy, heavy story. Woof. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hmm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Julia. I, you know, but at the same time, that's another another fact about this, this time of year is that it's also a desperate time. And it also is a time when people give up. And that is horribly tragic. And, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're hurting... Find some help. Find somebody to listen. Find somebody to contact. Somebody will hear and somebody will talk to you. You're never alone. <clears throat> I know it seems like, you know, and I've been that place. I've been that place in my life where it doesn't feel like there's anything left, that there's no more pain you could possibly feel. I've been that place many times in my life. But you just got to hang on because it really does get better. It really does improve. And I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna play the the, you know, time heals all wounds because it doesn't. Time doesn't heal your wounds. It won't. It can't. But time will help you learn to live with the scars. And that's the truth. You're never gonna be over a pain, but you can learn to live with the scars and find good things. So don't give up. Don't don't ever give up. Ah. Uh, it's just, at that point, you're not hurting yourself. You're hurting everyone that did love you. 
and you're, you're causing them to bear your scars. So don't do that. Please don't do that. The next one I'm going to read you is a little shorter and hopefully, hopefully a whole lot happier. But, uh, <clears throat> wow. I live in San Francisco in an old section of town in a relatively new condo built in 1989. My husband bought a home, brought home a charm at Christmas time, 1995, that a friend who was experimenting with dark arts made. Oh, jeez. And he set it on a glass entry table. Well, this is off to a great start. <laughs> Oh, in February 1996, the energy activated by the charm came into full bloom. For instance, I took off a pair of uh, earrings one evening and set them on the arm of the rest on the armrest of a chair, and they were gone the next morning, and then reappeared shortly after uh, on the ottoman beside the chair. The energy became more aggressive. My beloved cat and I were in the dining area and we heard a distinct meow, and my cat began to walk towards the noise. My cat became more and, came more and more under attack. Ultimately, with the lid of his litter box, was turned upside down in, into the litter so that he could not use the box. He was very distressed by the attacks he was under and was observant of an unseen energy around him. The door of the oven opened overnight, and I heard a raging... Uh, I heard raging around sounds. I don't know what that means, raging around sounds, in the living room at four in the morning. The back of the entertainment unit was, pull, was pulled, was being pulled away? It says pulled being away, but I'm sure they mean being pulled away, and I could hear it being pulled out. I saw a red warrior metal-type entity with a shield for a split second marching toward the charm on the entry table. There were knocking sounds above my head while showering or dressing in the morning. And finally, in April 1996, I contacted a spiritual source and was told to take the charm away at the new moon and place it in a crossroads, which turned out to be in a trash can near the metro stop. I then cleansed the house with white sage. Some of the harassment stopped, but it still exists. Now my husband and I both heard a wind like a hissing sound from the closet area where the entity stays most of the time. The energy tried to enter me while I was lying down, causing a heightened experience of color and forms, and I lay down on the bed and heard a bang. The entity caused a noise from the metal bed frame and then moved the covers, and I felt a chopping, in, the, in, in parentheses, blade, question mark, experience in my midsection. I've heard t clicks and bangs throughout the house, and recently the entity marched towards me, close up. I felt it and caused the floor to vibrate. A favorite ploy it has to activate the computer from sleep to ready mode. How can I rid my home of this energy and what is that has been here for over 10 years? The energy is definitely not good. Well, I know one way you could contact the Paranormal Portal by uh, emailing us at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. We have several people who would be happy to help you. Um, we have a lot of very talented people that help deal with these kind of things all the time. So, and that's one of the things I'm really proud of for the, for the show, too, is that we can do that. We, we have those contacts. We have those people that are willing to put themselves in harm's way to help, so... Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this show. I guess I can read you one more. You guys want to hear another one? Want to hear one more? I'll find you one more. If it's short, I might find you two more. Because this is Christmas and I'm giving. I'm giving my love to you guys. So, love, 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 love. <laughs> I love Jack in the chat room. <laughs> Just, you know, I can only catch these little these little segments. But <laughs> how did you get to that, D? I just wonder where the rest of the chat, <laughs> the chat is. I hear the more dates you eat, the more dates you get. What? <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to eat your dates, are you? <laughs> I think I've read that book or seen that movie, and it doesn't usually go well. All right, this one is pretty pretty uh, 
pretty short, and it uh, has to do with a cat again. So this may be nothing, but almost every night for the past two weeks, from 12 to 1 a.m., my cats act very strangely. He likes to sleep next to my leg usually, but lately, the minute I get into bed and lean over to call him to me, he sits at the end of my bed, staring at an area above my head, past my shoulder. There's a little ambient light in my bedroom at night due to double curtains I have installed to allow me to sleep in during the day, but his eyes almost glow as he stares unblinkingly. He's a talkative cat, and at these times he goes completely mute and wide-eyed. I've gotten out of bed to pick him up, and he will sit by my feet just staring. It has gotten to the point where, when it's bedtime, I literally call out in my apartment, okay, bedtime, good night, everyone, and he will wander up to the bed and fall asleep. He is a strong presence while I sleep as well. The only times I can recall having nightmares involved what I chalk up to being souls that aren't exactly nice or possibly indigestion. (laughs) It's either souls or indigestion. That's a pretty wide spectrum. Um, And that is when he's asleep in the other room. It's like I have to have him near me to sleep well. It's an old apartment, been around since the 20s, and from my understanding, there has only been one family other than myself in the apartment, the landlord's parents and then his sister. But there are times when I feel like I'm being watched. I know with my cat I feel safer. He seems to be a calming force for me. The funniest thing, when he, he was jet black cat until this past Christmas, and then a white patch started growing above his right eye. Now that's interesting. I've heard of I've heard of people spontaneously developing, you know, white in their hair, white streaks, white white patches after uh presence of a spirit. Um, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but could the same be true for a cat, you know, or, or an animal? If they encounter a powerful spirit, could it alter the that hair growth? I don't know. Just speculation, mind you, but very curious. And I'm going to find another one, because that was just far too quick. I'm not quite done with you yet. <laughs> oh, here's one. This kind of reminds me of Don. <laughs> it's different, though, but it kind of reminds me of Don. This one, this one is called The Disappearing Hand. And, of course, you know, if you know the show, you know that why that reminds me of Don. Don's hand doesn't disappear. It just <laughs> It just forms its own evil will <laughs> when he sleeps on it. For those of you who haven't followed my stories, I, I, and I'm one of them, I don't know your stories, but let's go ahead. Some of you will recall the, the one of the haunted home for those who haven't, you can, oh man, I'm pretty sure I've already read this one. That sounds, the, that opening sounds, hold on. No, I don't think so. It says, one day when I was a teenager, my neighbor approached me and asked me if I would like to earn some extra money by helping him clean up the basement. I don't know. This does sound familiar. I think I'm going to skip this one. It sounds too familiar. So, okay, this one sounds good. Let's see if this one is good. I was home one afternoon by myself watching television, and I thought I heard something in the kitchen, so I looked up, and I absolutely froze. There stood a man that I had never seen before. Yet, he seemed really familiar to me. I couldn't move or say anything, and I'm not sure how long I sat there staring at this guy, but the next thing I knew, he was gone. All the doors were locked, um, no one could have come in, and after that I saw shadows and things out of the corner of my eye. But he never showed himself to me like that again. Several weeks later, I was at home with my parents, brother and niece and nephew, and my dad and brother were standing at the counter, and they wanted to show my mom and I something, so we looked in, in at them and carried on. And later that night, after everyone had gone, my mom and I were talking, and she asked if I had seen anything weird when we had looked into the, into, into the guys. I said, yes, why? And she said that she had seen a little girl with long blonde hair standing between them, smiling. I saw the same little girl. My niece and nephew were in the living room at the time and looked nothing like this little girl, so we know it wasn't either one of them. It was, I'm Freddy. What? (laughs) Lewis says I'm Freddy. 
I don't even know what that means, Lewis. <laughs> but I'm going to take a look at the chat before we're done. <laughs> no, it wasn't about Don's basement, Pixie. It was just that I'm pretty sure I've read it before. So I try not to be redundant here on the portal because, you know, there's lots of things to read. Um, we did get a really good uh, uh, emailed story in, and I'm going to be reading that, I think, on Saturday night. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Deb will be joining us on Friday, if I'm remembering that right. Let me look at the calendar. Yes, Friday, the 28th. Deb will be joining us here on the portal, and she'll be doing free call and readings to uh, listeners. So that number that you see under the Paranormal Portal title, that is 213-233-3998. That will be working. And uh, if you would like a free reading, then you can call that number, and uh, Deb will be happy to give you a peek into your 2019. And this is a really cool time. I, you know, I, I knew before 2018 happened it was going to be a phenomenal year, and now... What I think has happened in this last year is that I think that all of us have broken a lot of cycles. And it seems to be a common thread, you know, to many people that I talk to, that they're, they're how do I put this, that they're discarding old patterns, that they're moving beyond old blocks and old, old luggage that they've been carrying around. And so in that regard now... While many, th many would say, well, it's not been a great year. It's been a, a time of trials. And, and yeah, it has. But there's some amazing things that are developing, I think. And I'm just hoping that 2019 will be the real manifestation of these amazing things that have been made available to us because of the processing we've been doing in 2018. Um, I think that this is... a a really special time, and I've been saying this for a long time, but uh, in fact, for over a year now, um, it's just a really special time. And it has been incredible, uh, an incredible year, because the portal has really become its own entity, and you guys, uh, of course, have been a big part of that. And, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep saying the same things over and over, but it really is an exciting time, and, and I'm really excited for what's coming up. And, you know, the avenues that hopefully we'll be able to explore really soon with the show. So what you're what you're a part of, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully is, uh, you know, a growing phenomenon here on the par Paranormal Portal. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how far it's going to grow. I don't know what it's capable of growing into. I just know that I'm I'm committed to seeing it through to wherever it's leading. So um, and I'm really thrilled that you guys are here with me for that ride and have been so instrumental in, uh, in perpetrating all of this. So um, I guess that's going to wrap it up for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But I, I hope you, again, uh, I love you all very much. I really tried to go through my friends list and, and leave little notes on everybody's walls, but I didn't even come close to getting them done. But I just hope you all know how incredibly special and important you are to me, and that's incredibly sincere. I don't know how else to say that. But you guys have, have been amazing and supportive and have done so much to create a community. I can't take any credit for that. This is you guys that have created this amazing community around the show. Um, I can take credit for the show itself, but the community that's grown around it is all you guys. And, and the family that has grown around it has been uh, orchestrated and, and perpetuated by all of you. So you guys have made this. And uh, I'm, I'm really honored that you chose to do it here and that we are doing it together. So thank you so much. You all have been amazing gifts to me. And I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to write on everybody's walls, but just know that that is the conviction of my heart and that is truly the way I feel. Um, I am just honored to know each and every one of you, and uh, I thank you sincerely. And I'm really looking forward to 2019 with you guys. So um of course, Don and I will be back tomorrow night for our Wednesday edition, and we'll see what we can get into. And it looks like we're going to have that New Year's Eve show, but I, I think it's... <laughs> I still haven't talked to the wife. <laughs> oh, God, I might be in trouble. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to mention it to the missus. And <laughs> I don't, we don't usually do anything anyway. We're, we're really pretty uh, simple people as far as we don't go out and do clubs and do the countdowns or anything like that. And uh, we're pretty much homebodies. But uh, if that works out, I will let you know tomorrow night on the show 
whether or not the the New Year's Eve show is a go, but I'm pretty sure I'm 99 percent sure it will be. So anyway, remember Friday night, Deb Varner is joining us here for uh, call-in readings. So spread the word. If you know someone that needs a reading or needs a peek ahead or is going through a tough time, clue them into that show and uh, let them know the number, and it'll be at 7 p.m. Pacific time, as always, and uh, have them call in. It'd be great to meet them, great to hear, and, uh, and I'm sure Deb can give them some kind of nuggets that'll help them on their journey as well. Or if any of you are at a point where you need some more feedback, please call in. There's not a there's no one call rule on the portal. If if the phone lines are open, call in and I'll answer them in the order they came in. So, love you all. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And I'll be back with Don t- tomorrow, and we'll crack this egg open once again. So, you guys have a wonderful night, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>